Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us watch management of this intumescent cataract. After making the incisions, an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber and tripan blue dye is applied underneath this air bubble. When we apply dye underneath an air bubble, and if the dye touches all parts of the anterior capsule, the staining is very fast and very good. This is a real-time surgery and you will see how quickly the dye has stained the anterior capsule. The dye is washed out with PSS just after application and you can see that this is a deep staining of the anterior capsule. The antichamber has been filled up with 2% SPMC. And now a small puncture is made at the center. It's a kind of C flap is made and some oily fluid comes out, which indicates that this is an intumescent cataract. The C flap is converted into a mini axis when we use only SPMC and no other viscoelastic substance. We may call this Mohanta's mini axis. And now some cortical matter is removed. Very nicely, the cortex is removed. The nucleus is rotating by this time and a lot of cortical matter has come out and the intralenticular pressure has gone down. And just like a routine case, the capsule will not tend to run to periphery as we extend this small rexus. Vana scissor is taken, a small leak is made at, at the margin of the mini rexus at 8 o'clock. Uteta forceps is taken and this small rexus is converted into an adequate size rexus of about 5 millimeter. And now, this nucleus is not hard. Though it is white mature cataract, it is not hard. But intumescent cataracts may contain a very hard nucleus. But in this case, this is a softer nucleus. When the nucleus is soft, there is, you have to take more caution to hold the nucleus and we should not catch the posterior capsule. In hard cataracts, it is difficult to catch the posterior capsule. And in soft cataracts, it is easy to catch the posterior capsule. And now, let us see how we can divide this nucleus into several fragments. If the nucleus, the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. The nucleus is held very firmly. And this is the first crack. I rotate the nucleus. This hemineucleus is chopped into pieces and the pieces are emulsified. Ultrasonic energy used in this case is 65 percent. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute. Vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. And this is the last portion of the nucleus, it is emulsified in lower parameters and it is done. And I come out. Now the anterior chamber is 
underfilled with SPMC and in this case I am going to use bimanual irrigation aspiration. To get the bimanual irrigation aspiration device, we must give some time to our assistants. Now with the irrigating cannula, I hydrate the cortex first so that they get loosened and then I use irrigation and aspiration together and see how easily the cortex comes out once it is nicely hydrated. Almost 270 degree of cortex has come out. And now this is one quadrant of cortex from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock and it is easily removed. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. I am going to use a B cartridge. So I enlarge the main wound a bit and hydro implantation of a single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens is done. The lens has gone into the capsule bag. The lens is dialed by the irrigating probe and we are towards the end of the surgery. Since we have not used any visco for implantation of the intraocular lens, we have avoided the risk of visco induced raised intraocular pressure. The side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of these stab wounds. And finally, antechamber lavage is done with bases using a 23 gauze Simcoe cannula. The antechamber is very nicely formed. Then integrity of all the wounds are checked. This is final lavage of the anterior chamber and the anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.